Next up, we have Tony uh, Berger, Director of Affinity Travel. Great, thanks, Clea. I'm just going to uh, share my screen and thanks. We're good. Great. Well, thanks for having us and uh, and uh, co-hosting us with us. We're, we're excited to be here. As as you said, my name is Toby Berger. I'm the uh, director of travel at Affinity, and I'm just going to help set the scene a little bit. Um, definitely love to hear about from the rest of our speakers, and they're going to be providing the bulk of the content. But um, thought I would help kind of bring everyone back to how we got to where we are today and where are we today. Um, so I mean. I, I don't need to go into too much detail here, but I think it's good to an important reminder how how much the pandemic has has halted uh, the economies and um, travel around the world. Um, it's brought economies to a halt um, everywhere. Um, some countries have been more impacted than others. Um, obviously, uh, in the, the Western world and third world countries have emerged um, a lot faster, um, and so we're still seeing um, emerging markets, especially, completely shut down still and. Um, lack of uh, economic activity happening there, um, lack of travel, and as Jim stated at the beginning, you no know, loved ones still being separated. Um, and this is this has caused this increased increased um, you know, need to prove vaccine status when you travel. And in some countries, you know, people just aren't getting vaccinated at the speed they they should be, either because um, they don't want to, or 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 because the, the countries are emerging and you know, have the resources to buy those vaccines. So more developed, underdeveloped countries are feeling that impact a, a lot more. Um, and then the result of this requirement to be vaccinated has created this extremely complex travel environment. Um, and I think, you know, we're, we're still sorting through that. And, you know, hopefully today, the, you know, some of our speakers will share kind of how, how we're all trying to help out in, in, the, in the ways that, um, will make travel easier in the future. Um, so, so what are some of the challenges that we're seeing um, across the industry from Affinity's perspective? I think, firstly, is we're just seeing this fragmentation across solutions. Um, and even today, you're going to hear a bunch of uh, you know a different uh, ways in which the technology providers are helping. But I think it's also important to know that there are these different um, methodologies because there's not going to be a one size solution. It's all solution. And I think that's one of the reasons that we're here today is, is to come together as a community and see you know, what are some of the different options available in the market and then you know, how can we best put those to work. Um, I think the, the second piece is, is cost. It, it's, this is a costly operational um, business. Um, the airline, the border controls, um, and then even further downstream into uh, more travel operational companies, whether they're doing experiences, or transportation, um, adding these processes isn't easy. So, um, you know, digitization obviously is, is a better way of doing it, but still implementing those processes is still quite costly. Um, I think the third uh, challenge we're seeing is that, you know, the lack of digital adoption in some areas is causing um, inefficient and error prone manual clarification. And we're still seeing that, even though there are um, digital uh, op opportunities today. There are still companies and even borders that are using manual verification. So I think you know coming together as a community and figuring out how we can help um, these laggards is, is going to be important. And finally, um, governments are really pushing the risk down to operators. Um, and we're seeing this around the world. Um, more and more governments are insisting that essentially airlines um, and further uh, upstream uh, providers. Um, take on this risk and take on the responsibility of verification. And I think there's an interesting debate that we could have later on today on who's responsible that should be, but um, but, I, but but we're certainly seeing it around the world. Um, and I've I've actually traveled I traveled mid October from Singapore to Vancouver, my hometown, and I saw all this in 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 real life. Um, I mean, I don't know being in APAC how many of you have traveled yet, but um, but it's not the experience that it was pre-COVID. Um, all points on my journey, I had to show a number of different documentations, even though you, know, you should only have to 
theoretically do it once. You know, you do it multiple times when you're departing. If you're a connecting flight, which I had uh, through the US, you have different requirements. Um, and really that experience, especially when you're traveling with a young child, is, is a really terrible experience. So, um, and it's no fault from any of the operators. Um, but I think that there's, you know, a massive opportunity here to make that a, a much better experience. And so, I mean, this is a slide that we show quite a bit at Affinity, um, and it really shows kind of this, this fragmentation um, in, the, in this space. Um, so there's different types of certificates, whether they be test or vaccine certificates. We're still seeing some paper um, in the market. Um, so especially on the testing side, there's lots of clinics around the world that um, are still issuing pure paper certs with no digital um, mark on them. Um, and then you have, even by governments, you have some, most governments are doing national codes, but you have some countries, uh, for example, Canada and the US, where you have states or provinces issuing credentials. Um, so you have a lack of uniformity, even within a country issuing uh, vaccine certs. Um, and then you've got different passes. And I think that these passes are important and um, you know, there's different uses for them. But I mean, when we talk to a uh, government or an airline, for example, they say, oh no, we're already working with these two passes over here. And that's great. But the problem is, is not every traveler is going to know how to use that passport. <laughs> um, so I think like as a community, there's a massive opportunity here to educate um, both the operators and also the, the, the travelers on kind of what their options are and, and how best to use them. And then of course you have airlines and border controls, which aren't even talking uh, today or very little. So um, how do we make that, that seamless, a more seamless experience for the traveler? And so I, I thought I would take a bit of a step back here and just to make sure we're, uh, we've level set and just understand what, what are verifiable credentials. Um, and so there's two key uh, components to of a verified credential. One is that they're digitally native. Um, and the second one is they're cryptographically secure. Um, and so that doesn't necessarily mean they sit on some kind of blockchain, um, but what it means is that they are uh, the code is secure and that those keys are then available to, um, to parties that um, should be able to read them. Um, and so there's a number of different benefits for using this type of technology. And the biggest one is that it's, it's purely digital, so there's, a, there's less friction in the process. Um, so most of these solutions, you can upload your... Um, credentials to some kind of website or an app, um, and then all that processing happens in the back. Um, secondly, they enable the creation of safer environments. So either that's either mandated or it could be just a, an operator or an experience or some kind of service chooses to insist that people are vaccinated. So thereby it creates a, a much safer environment for both the, um, the travelers or experiencers and their employees. Um, I guess the third thing is that sometimes it's mandated by governments. Um, so even beyond travel, we're starting to see this in back to work, right? So in the US, um, they're insisting that businesses um, with over a certain number of employees be mandated to be vaccinated to, to, to go back to work in the new year. In Singapore, um, as of January 1st, everyone that wants to go back to the office needs to be vaccinated. So, um, so digital verification enables that at scale um, when you know, HR departments don't necessarily want to have that type of information on file. Um, increased business revenue is another opportunity. Some premium, um, maybe hospitality hotels or other experiences might decide, hey, we want, we want to charge a premium because, or we can charge a premium because we're creating this, this safe environment and, and digitally verifying everyone. Um, I think that the one that we all want is this return to normalcy. Right, so I think we all want a, a time in, in where we can go to and many of us go to restaurants as we want. We're free to travel, um, and really, like the that that enablement will come with knowing that people are vaccinated um, and that verification can be done at scale. I think Omnicom Omnicron was is certainly an eye opener. I think there was a lot of debate around our office around how much use or what was the the, the time that this kind of verification would need to continue. I think that the these new variants mean that I don't think that vaccine requirements are going to go away anytime soon. And then, I mean, for the individuals, it, it's pretty simple, right? You have a much 
um, more seamless experience. You can go to as many uh, experiences or travel as much as you want or go to concerts. Um, I mean, uh, my wife went to a concert in, in Los Angeles while we, we transited through um, the U.S. And everyone that went to that stadium had to be vaccinated. And the only way to do that at scale is, is for digital verification. Um, and then finally, it's just the ability to enjoy anything and not have to worry about whether the person beside you is vaccinated. Um, so so we're, we've seen these ecosystems develop um, on the verifier side. I mean, most governments are doing this. Airlines are, are needing to do this because governments are mandating to. And we're also seeing other travel companies do it. Um, we're seeing ride interest from ride sharing companies, um, both from their drivers and also from their passenger side. So there's starting to develop this ecosystem of verifiers. And then on the issuer side, you have everything from governments to healthcare institutions, um, and then other enterprises that want to issue some kind of um, health credential. Um, and we're seeing that, that expand over time, but there still needs to be a lot of education on the issuer side. We're still seeing a lot of healthcare institutions not understand like why they need to issue digital certificates. And I think that's another thing um, that we as a community can, can help with. And so we have this, ideal traveler, traveler flow here at Affinity. It's certainly much different than the flow that I went through where um, the traveler, before they travel anywhere, you need to first be check um, what the requirements are to get there. I know transiting, sometimes you have two different requirements. Um, that certainly was the case with us. Um, you research, you book your flights, you then um, find a clinic that can provide you that digital certificate. Again, I think this is the difference between a, um, some of the passes which have very prescribed networks that you can go to versus more of an interoperable verifier solution like, like the one we have. Um, you, get your, you go to your clinic, you get your test, your vaccine, you get your results, you do your pre-departure check-in and this is I think where the big, the, the, this is where the ideal scenario happens. You upload all your documentation to the airline website. In an ideal world, all that information should just pass on for the rest of your journey. And I think that, you know, if there's one thing that we can work on as a community, it's how do we make that happen where after the airline ingests all that information or the government, that is still passed along all the parties along that, that, uh, that route. And then, you know, stress-free travel. So, you know, whether you're connecting or not, that signal that you're good to fly has been passed on uh, to each of the airlines on that route and then even towards that immigration uh, um, so with that, I'm going to go pass this back to Kalia and uh, to introduce the next, next speaker.